Friends, listen. When you pray in tongues, today I focus on one benefit, not about intercession. The benefit is how it builds up your body and keep you, all right, in a place where you are built up so that stress, worry, fear, anxiety, panic attacks will not have any more uh, leeway or any more um, victory over your life. You can be free from addictions and you can even be free from physical infirmities. Are you ready? So can we just focus on this one area first? Amen. And in the days to come, if the Spirit of God uh, sees fit to focus on this, we'll focus on other benefits. Can I have a good amen, people? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Say edifies. The word edifies is made of, the etymology of this word comes from two Latin words. All right? Edify. Edis is actually a house or a building. Like edify can be an edifice, a tall building, a large building. So the word edify, the etymology is from the Latin edis, which is house or building. Ficare, fi, fis. All right? For the word build, construct. Put them together, it is the word to construct or to repair, to build a house. Today we say edify in terms like, well, Pastor Prince, your message today was edifying. In other words, morally comforting, morally inspiring or whatever. But we think in terms, we don't think in terms of physical. Okay, but the, the root word actually is physical. It's referring to a building. In fact, in the Greek, this word here, in the Greek edifies, is the word oiko dormio. Oikos is a house, a building. Dormio is to build the building. Amen? Dormio. In Italy, you hear, see a lot of dormio. All right? A building. Dom. Dormio. Oikos dormio. To build a house. Oikos, a house. Oh, well, Pastor Prince, we are not houses. <laughs> All right? We are. We are temples. You know which part of you is a temple? Or oh, my spirit. That's what we've been told. Your spirit is not a temple. Your body is a temple. Look at 1 Corinthians 6. Or do you not know that your body is the temple? Your what? Your body. Your body is the temple. Now, I know the Holy Spirit dwells in our spirit, but it doesn't say your spirit is the temple. You cannot find the Bible. It says your spirit is the temple. It says your body is the temple. Your soma in the Greek. Your body. Not your psyche. All right? Not your pneuma. Your soma. Psych psychosomatic conditions, you know, from your mind. But soma is body for Greek. So it says, do you not know that your soma, your body is the temple. And the word temple here is not the outward precincts of the temple. The word temple here is the holy of holies and the holy place. This is literally the sanctuary. Your body is the holy of holies. Your body is the holy place of God. Your body is the temple of God. And God wants His temple beautiful. God wants His temple clean. God wants His temple holy. God wants the word, the word whole, healthy, healthy, come from the old word that says hail, H-A-L-E, which is the word whole, complete, healthy. Amen. Heal, complete, completeness. God wants your body complete. Amen. So back then, God would say, your body is today the temple of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? So go back to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. He who speaks in the tongue, oikodomio, builds himself. Another thing is that the mistake we make, and, 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 and I grew up among some great teachers who taught on praying in tongues, but I think where the emphasis was wrong was this. They said that when you pray in tongues, you charge your spirit. Now, thank God your spirit is charged, but not just your spirit. It doesn't say he, will build, he speaks in a tongue, builds up his spirit, but himself. Himself means what? All of you. Now, which part of you is, is uh, the temple? Your body. Especially your body. Why is this teaching important? Because we preach like this. People will know every time they pray in tongues and the devil says, you're just making it up. Stop it. And they, they get discouraged. They stop it. They don't realize that they're stopping their health. They're stopping their wholeness. They're stopping their, their health from springing forth speedily. Are you listening, people? Amen? So it's important we hear the word. Somehow people have this idea that when you pray in tongues, only your spirit is being charged. And I think they got this idea from first same chapter, but later on verse 14 says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. Which part of you pray? 
my spirit prays. So they, they, they think that, oh, that's the part that got charged. No, it's just telling you which part of you is praying when you pray in tongues. When you pray in English, your mind, you must know the words, right? Your mind is praying. But when you pray in tongues, which part of you is praying? Your spirit is praying. Are you listening? Your spirit is praying. Doesn't say your spirit is the one that gets edified, but your spirit is praying. But which part of you gets edified? Back, back to verse 4. Edifies himself. And because the word edified, or I call domio, means building, constructing, or repairing a house or building, which part of your, your person is the temple, your body? That means when you pray in tongues, you are preparing, you are building, you are constructing, you are repairing your body. Then the Apostle Paul quotes from the Old Testament, from the prophet Isaiah specifically, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to these people, and yet for all that, they will not hear me, says the Lord. Unfortunately, a segment of God's people even will not hear Him when it comes to praying in tongues. And the context here is tongues because the next verse says, therefore tongues are for a sign. So it's very clear, he's talking about praying in tongues. Okay? He's quoting the Old Testament. Whenever the Holy Spirit quotes the Old Testament, it will do us, it will pay us good. It will benefit us for us to look at the quotation. So let's go to that quotation in the Old Testament. It's from Isaiah 28. For with stammering lips and another tongue will, I, will God speak to these people. To whom God said, now watch this. Now there's an additional benefit. This way it always pays you well to look up the reference. And the context here says, God is saying, this is the rest. Definite article. Ha Manuka. Definite article. This is the rest which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the magia, the refreshing yet they would not hear. You know, God is offering you R&R, &R, rest and refreshing. Guys, you all know, right? <laughs> After your, 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 your term and exercise in the field and all that, overseas, you have an R&R &R days, right? Rest and refreshing. Literally, rest and recreation. This is God's rest and refreshing. God is saying, this is the rest. Though it's a definite article. And the word rest here is actually the word manuka. It helps you to remember the manuka, honey. All right, same pronunciation, manuka. All right, manuka. This is the manuka. In other words, there's a place of rest. In the midst of a world full of stress, worries, anxieties, with bad news almost every day. Amen? It's very easy for our hearts to be fearful, but God says there's a place called manuka. This is the rest. And the whole context there is referring to stammering lips and another tongue. The Old Testament, the promised land, is a land where they will enter the land and drink from wells they did not dig, eat from vineyards they did not plant, build, uh, live in houses they did not build. In other words, the promised land is a literal land of which they did not do the work. Amen? Like a rest, you just enter in. But what is our rest today? Our rest today in Hebrews is actually the rest of God. Watch this. This same word, manoka. In Psalms, it says, God swore in my wrath about the children of Israel that refused to believe Him. And right, God says, enter the land. Uh, what I just told you just now, I, I've given you a land flowing, not just filled, but flowing. Idea of uh, over, superfluence, abundant, superfluous. It's, 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 it's exceeding, a flowing of milk and honey. And yet they say, no, uh, uh, you know, God hate us. That's why God brought us to this land. And it broke God's heart. And God says, I swore in my wrath, they will not enter my rest. Hebrew, Manuka. An interesting thing is that Hebrews 4 talks about this same passage and says, let us labor therefore to enter the rest. I wonder if the labor is praying in tongues. Because praying in tongues sometimes is like a labor. You pray, 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 pray. After one day, people ask you, any change? Yes. Dry mouth. <laughs> Tired tongue. And then you pray, 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 pray. Not two more days. Is there any change in your body? Yes. What is it? Blur, tired. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and spiritually, all right, it seems like nothing is happening and there's a spiritual attack on you. The devil is saying, give up, give up. I'm just making it up. Stop it, stop it. And then you're still praying in tongues and all of a sudden you realize something is happening but deep down inside first. It's long before God removes your disease. Long, long before God removes your depression. Long before God destroys that addiction in your life. All right, by you praying in tongues. First of, first of all, the first few days, I believe, he's dealing with your fears, your panic attacks, your anxieties, your depression, your stress. 
And that's why the, after you pray in tongues for the first day, you don't say, well, the pain is still there, the condition is still there. No, God is dealing from the inside out. And I'll show you more of this. And I'm telling you people, listen carefully, stress is becoming a real problem, especially in these last days. Jesus says man's heart, and I believe he was referring to the literal heart. It's hard to find whether the Bible is referring to a literal heart or a spiritual heart because both use the word cardia in the Greek. So Jesus says man's cardia will fail because of the fear of looking at what is coming upon the earth. So be careful when you look at the news and things like that, all right? We're not saying put our heads in the, in the sand like an like a, you know, ostrich and all that, pretend things don't exist. No, we have, we have to be aware, but make sure that there's a strength on the inside, that you don't get depressed from the outside. Wherever you're watching this right now, do the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, I am confident that you will give me right now the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Inundate me, fill me, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Jesus has been glorified. Therefore, the Holy Spirit has been given. And I received right now your Holy Spirit to overflowing in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, count to three right now and then release yourself in the heavenly language. One, two, three. Go ahead. That's right. Go ahead. Now increase your volume. Now, speak undertones. You can do this at work. You can do this at home when people are around. The Bible says, speak to himself and to God. Quietly. Amen? You are in control. Listen, you are in control. The spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. When an evil spirit takes over, you have no choice. He makes you shout. He makes you scream. All right? And then the Holy, the Holy Spirit stops when you stop. Amen? In other words, He will not force you. He's a gentleman. You, you cannot wait for the Holy Spirit to open your mouth. He will not do that. You must open, you speak, He gives you the language. That's how God works. Evil spirits will force you and won't let you stop. That's not God's way. That's why this is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now we're gonna sing in tongues. No music for a while, please. We're gonna sing in tongues, okay? Now this is wonderful. Let's speak with your stress. Learn to sing in tongues. All right, maybe you might start singing in the toilet first, but whatever it is, in the bathroom, whatever, start singing the Spirit. Amen? Something like this. Okay, you can stop. You see, you can stop, right? You can start, you can stop anytime you want to. It's yours. It's yours. It must be a river that never stops. Okay? Doesn't matter if you're stammering for a while. Keep on stammering. As you're faithful with one, two syllabus, God gives you more. Amen? And God gives you more and more. Amen? You see, you can sing without the, the, the music. Because when Monday comes, they won't be there. Okay? It'll be you. You can sing in the Spirit. You can sing. Amen? Your wife scolds you. Your wife tells you your mother-in-law is coming. God bless you. Lift your hands all across this place. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you this coming week, you and your loved ones. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance on you and grant to you and yours His wonderful shalom, wholeness and peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Don't ever let it stop. Don't ever let it stop. Amen. God bless you.
If you were blessed by this video, please feel free to comment on what spoke to you, hit the like button, or share this with a friend who needs encouragement. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.